Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on signal representation. For today, this will be the part four series discussion on signal representation. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about signal representation. For today, okay, I'm going to show it to you how we can make use of Fourier series to represent a complex periodic signal. Okay, you probably will ask, what is a complex periodic signal? Okay, a complex periodic signal, in short, basically consists of more than one frequency component, which means that this signal actually consists of more than one frequency component. For example, a square wave, a triangular wave, they basically is called a complex periodic signal. So we're going to take a closer look on this. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Thank you so much. Let's do a very quick recall. Based on the previous video, I have mentioned that for a periodic sine wave, they basically consist of only one frequency component. How we get this frequency component is basically based on the period of the sine wave. After we obtain the period of the sine wave, basically we can do one over the period. This will result getting the frequency. As for sine wave, we can only have one frequency component. Next, for complex signal, they basically consist of many, many frequency components. So for me, if you ask me, as long as there is more than one frequency component, we call this a complex signal. Let's take a look on this diagram here. So this is what we understand in our secondary school day. Okay, for example, this is a prism. Okay, a prism is used to split white light into its component. Okay, for example, a white light enter into the prism, they will split into rainbow color. So this is what it means by complex signal. Okay, for example, okay, we have this complex signal, which is a square wave. When they underwent this prism, they basically split into different frequency component. So you can imagine that these are all the different colors having different wavelength. So this is what it means by complex signal. And we can actually make use of four series to represent this complex signal. Four series. Okay, the four series is used to analyze the signal to determine the frequency component that make up the complex periodic signal. Okay, so which means that Fourier series is used to see how many frequency component that is used to generate this signal. So this is why we need to have Fourier series, how many dominate frequency component we need to have in order to generate this signal. A complex periodic signal is actually made up of a frequency component having a frequency value known as fundamental frequency. Okay, so the complex periodic signal, we have this fundamental frequency and we also have many other frequency component okay, which frequency value are integrate multiplies of the fundamental frequency. Okay, for example, for the fundamental frequency is F. Okay, so next, basically the other frequency component consists of 2F, 3F, 4F, 5F, 6F, 7F, etc. Okay, so this is what it means in this line here. Okay, the fundamental is the lowest frequency that can be found in the complex periodic signal. Okay, which means that this fundamental, they has the lowest frequency in all these frequency component. The other frequency are known as the higher harmonics. Okay, by now you should know what is harmonics. Harmonics basically spaced in two times, three times, four times, like what I have described to you earlier on. So this is what we call harmonics or higher order harmonics. Let's do a quick example in order to understand fundamental frequency and harmonics. If a signal has a fundamental frequency of four kilohertz, 
Okay, so the fundamental frequency is 4 kilohertz, and this is the lowest frequency. Remember, fundamental has the lowest frequency. What is the second harmonics and third harmonics? So from here, we know that the fundamental frequency is 4 kilohertz. The second harmonics is 2 times the fundamental frequency, which is 8 kilohertz. As for the third harmonics, we basically use 3 times F, which is the fundamental frequency, which result in 12 kilohertz. Okay, I don't think you have any issue on this example. Next, let's quickly do some understanding on Fourier series. This slide here shows the equation okay, that we need to use to represent complex signal using Fourier series. Okay, but for today, I'm not going to touch so much on mathematics. Maybe I should say that for this video, I'm going to show it to you how we can apply Fourier series okay, to represent the complex com frequency component. Okay, like what I mentioned, all these tedious mathematics, I will leave it on another day. Example two, draw the amplitude spectrum of the square wave given the Fourier series expression below. Okay, so we have this Fourier series equation that is given below. Okay, basically, they are used to describe this square wave in time domain. Firstly, the question also tasks us to draw the frequency domain. Okay, amplitude spectrum is equal to frequency domain. Okay, how can we convert from time domain to frequency domain? Let's work on the equation. Okay, so this is the equation to represent the square wave here. What we need to do is basically we open up the bracket. For example, this is one. We have 4a over pi. Next, we have 4a over pi multiplied by 1 over 3. Next, we have this 4a over pi multiplied by 1 over 5, which is shown over here. Next, we have 4a over pi multiplied by 1 over 7, which is shown over here. Okay, let's do some analysis on this equation here. Firstly, this is what I have mentioned early on. This is the lowest frequency. Hence, we know that this is a fundamental frequency. They have a peak amplitude of 4a over pi. Okay, so this belongs to the fundamental component. Next, we have this third harmonics. Okay, for third harmonics, the peak amplitude is equal to 4a over pi multiplied by 1 over 3. Okay, so this is the peak amplitude for the third harmonics. Next, we have the fifth harmonic. Okay, for fifth harmonic, the peak amplitude is equal to 4a over pi multiplied by 1 over 5. Next will be seven harmonics. Okay, for seven harmonics, we have 4a over pi multiplied by 1 over 7 as the peak amplitude. Okay, so this is basically what we need in order to draw the amplitude spectrum or the frequency domain. Okay, one thing I want to highlight. Okay, you can see over here, there are no even component. For example, the second harmonic is equal to zero. The fourth harmonic is also equal to zero. The sixth harmonic is also equal to zero. In short, okay, for this square wave, okay, basically what we have is the fundamental plus all the odd harmonics. The even harmonics is equal to zero. For square wave, we only have the odd harmonics. So this is what I want to share with you. This is what I have drawn or what I have discussed on the previous slide. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, we have the equation here. Okay, we should be able to draw the amplitude spectrum. Let's start off by drawing the fundamental. Okay, for fundamental, the frequency is F. For fundamental, they have a peak amplitude of 4A over pi, which is shown over here. After that, we don't really need to show the second harmonic because second harmonic is equal to zero. What next will be the third harmonic? For third harmonic, the peak amplitude is equal to 4a over 3 pi, which is illustrated here. For fifth harmonic, okay, the peak amplitude is 4a over 5 pi, which is illustrated here. And for the seventh harmonic, the peak amplitude is 4a over pi, 7 pi, okay, which is also illustrated here. Okay, so this is how we draw the amplitude spectrum from an equation. 
Okay, so an important observation that you should make is that the frequency component are spaced apart by an integrate multiplies of the fundamental frequency. Okay, which means that all the frequency component they are spaced apart by 2f because we don't have the even component. What we have is only the odd component. So basically the spacing between the two fundamental and the third harmonic is basically two times the f of the fundamental frequency. So this is what this line want to say. Plotting this individual frequency component and we add up the instantaneous value of this frequency component, okay, we notice how close the resulting waveform resemble the periodic square wave. If we add more and more higher order odd harmonics component, we will eventually get the square wave. Okay, so this is what we have plot on the previous slide. So this is the fundamental, this is the third harmonic, this is the fifth, and this is the seventh harmonic. Putting all this together basically in result over here. So this is what it means. Result square wave as a result of combining the fundamental frequency up to the seven harmonics. So we have the fundamental, we have the third, we have the fifth, we have the seven. In short, the more harmonic that we include, okay, the more flat will be over here. So which look more like a square wave. Okay, in order to get more, more seems like a square wave, we need to add more frequency component. Okay, for 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, etc. So we need to add more and more harmonics. This will result in a perfect square wave. Next, let's go through example three. A triangular waveform has a borer series as given below. So this is again an equation that is used to represent a triangular wave. Okay, so from here you can see that basically they use this borer series to represent a triangular waveform. Okay, where n is an odd integrate one, three, five, etc. Okay, draw the amplitude spectrum up to nine harmonic. So we need to draw all the way until nine harmonics. Okay, label your diagram and indicate all values. Okay, first thing like what I have done on the previous example, example two, okay, I actually open up the bracket. For example, 8a over pi squared, I open up, okay, which is here. Okay, and then this thing multiplied by this term here, which is here. So this is the third harmonic. So for the fifth harmonic, okay, the term is also here. This is for the seven harmonic. Okay, we need to draw until all the way to the nine. So this thing go on and on. Okay, but I will mention on the nine harmonic soon. Okay, so this is the equation here. So first thing we need to find the frequency. How can we find the frequency? Okay, the period of the triangular wave is two microsecond. Okay, you can see over here, this is the period. Okay, the period is actually two microsecond. And from here, we can actually find the fundamental frequency. Okay, so the fundamental frequency in fact is one over the period, okay, which is 0 0.5 megahertz. So this is the fundamental frequency. Okay, given in the question, okay, the A is equals to 5 volt here. Okay, you can see here A is equals to 5. So basically the 5 volt we can substitute into all this equation here. So this is how we can compute, okay, all the we construct a table first. Okay, for example, this is a fundamental. Okay, we don't have the even harmonics. All the even harmonics I remove away. We only have the odd harmonics three, five, seven, nine. Okay, so the fundamental frequency I know that if it's zero point five megahertz. As for the third harmonic, what I need to do is basically three times the fundamental frequency, which I can obtain one point five megahertz. As for fifth harmonic. Okay, which is equal to 2.5 megahertz. Seven harmonics, what I need to do is seven multiplied by 0 0.5, which is equal to 3.5 megahertz. As for the nine harmonics, I use nine multiplied by the fundamental frequency, which result having a frequency of 4.5 megahertz. We can also obtain the V peak value here. Okay, so this is the fundamental equation, okay, which consists of 8a over pi squared. Okay, remember. Okay, we mentioned that the a is equal to 5. So what I need to do is 8 times 5 over pi squared. 
I should be able to get this number, 4.05. As for the third harmonic, okay, the third harmonic VP is over here, which consists of 8A over pi squared, 3 squared. Okay, so this is mentioned here. And what I need to do is I substitute 5 into the A. I punch my calculator. I should be able to get this value. Okay, I believe you should be able to find all these individual components here. Next, we are ready to draw and label all the amplitude spectrum. Okay, so this is the amplitude spectrum. Okay, remember for amplitude spectrum, okay, it is uh, actually a frequency domain. So basically the X axis should be the frequency domain. And this is basically the peak voltage. Okay, for the first term I have 4.05, having the fundamental frequency of 0.5. So this is how I draw, having this fundamental frequency of 0.5 megahertz, I have a VP of 4.05. For the third harmonics, I have a VP of 0.45. Okay, for third harmonic, the frequency is 1.5 megahertz, which is shown over here. So the fifth harmonic is shown here. The seventh harmonic is shown here. The ninth harmonic is shown here. Okay, so with this, I actually successfully transform from an equation okay, into an amplitude spectrum. Okay, with this, I'd like to stop my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.